All right, welcome back. We are starting trigonometry today, um, but this is just a little bit of review of something from back in the day that you'll need to know to move forward. So, um, sine, cosine, tangent. Those are the three that you are already familiar with because it comes from Sokotoa from geometry last year. Sine, you should remember, is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. So what are these three new ones? Well, we have three reciprocals. So the reciprocal of sine is known as the cosecant, abbreviated CSC. And all you have to do is take the reciprocal. So it's the hypotenuse over the opposite. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. So that's going to give you the hypotenuse over the adjacent. And the uh, reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. So that's adjacent over opposite. So the three new ones are just the reciprocals of the three that you are already familiar with. So back in the day, you, ha you used to have to be able to just pick out ratios. Um, we're going to still use that in this class, but we're just going to take that to a whole new level. So going back to the basics, first thing you got to do is you have to find the missing side. Well, we have to use our good old buddy Pythagoras and his theorem, 3 squared plus x squared is equal to 5 squared, and that'll give us that that length is 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the sine of A by looking at angle A. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so you have to go to the sine that's farthest away. That's the opposite, and of course, this is always your hypotenuse, which is opposite of the 90-degree angle. So your sine of A is 4 fifths. The cosine of A uses the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Well, adjacent, if you forgot, means next to. So right next to angle A is the leg 3, and of course you have your hypotenuse of 5, so it's 3 fifths. But now look what's happening with tangent. We're switching gears and you're going to the tangent of B. So when you're looking at B, the hypotenuse will stay the same, but your opposite and adjacent will switch. Remember, the opposite side is the side that doesn't touch the angle. So the only side that doesn't touch angle B is this one way over here. So from angle B's reference, uh, your side of 3 is the opposite, which now makes the side of 4 your adjacent. And of course, the hypotenuse is always going to be the hypotenuse, so that is not going to change. So the tangent of B is opposite over adjacent, so now we're at 3 fourths. So now to answer the reciprocal, um, if it's the same letter, so cosine of A and we have the secant of A, then all you have to do is flip it or take the reciprocal. So the secant of A is 5 thirds. Um, notice how we have tangent of B and cotangent of B. So that, all you have to do is flip it, and you get four-thirds. The only one that's a little bit different is cosecant of B. Not only did you take the reciprocal of sine, we're also going to a different angle. So actually what you need to do is you need to go back to angle B and do your opposite over hypotenuse and flip it. So it's actually five-thirds. Okay, so the only way you can just take the reciprocal is if your angles actually match up. Okay, so that's old school trig with a little bit of new school trig. So you're going to have six different trig functions to know this year, not like in geometry when you only needed three. So another review topic that is essential to this unit of trigonometry is your old school 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90. Now, I always said that 45, 45, 90 is use the pattern LLL root 2 for leg, leg, leg root 2. And for 30, 60, 90, I always said that this was the short side, and this would be the short side root 3, and this would be 2 times the short side. Now, in geometry, you might have had x, x, x root 2 and x, x root 3, 2, x. Um, I use legs for isosceles triangles, and then I use short or s's 
for the short side. So we have short side, short side root 3, and 2s for 2 times the short side. Um, either way, it's up to you. So, can you apply it? That's the fun stuff. So, opposite of the 30 is always your short side. This is 2 times your short side, and this is the short side root 3. So we already have s. So this is 3 root 3, and this is 2 times 3, which is 6. When you go to this next one, we have s, s root 3, and 2s. Well, we have s root 3 is equal to 9, so now we just have to solve for s to finish the problem. So to get s by itself, you just divide both sides by the square root of 3, and you're going to get s is equal to 3 root 3. So the s side is 3 root 3, and 2 times 3 root 3 is 6 root 3. And the last example is one where you have a little bit of a radical problem, because again, we still have our s, our s root 3, and our 2s, but now s root 3 is equal to 11. And when you divide both sides by the square root of 3, remember you can never have a radical in the denominator. So s is actually 11 root 3 over 3, which means this side is 11 root 3 over 3, and this is 22 root 3 over 3. Now, if you forgot your 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90, and how to work with radicals, you might want to refresh a little bit before you start doing a lot of the problems in this chapter. Um, now, for the L, L, L root 2 ones, your legs are always going to be the same. So we have L root 2 is equal to 10. So to get L by itself, you just divide both sides by the square root of 2. And that's going to, of course, you can't have the radical in the denominator. So you bring it up, you get 10 root 2 over 2, which is 5 root 2 for both of your L's. And again, just to make it radically challenging, we have L, L, L root 2. L root 2 is equal to the square root of 13. After you divide both sides by the square root of 2 and get rid of your radical in the denominator, you're going to have that L is equal to the square root of 26 over 2, which you cannot simplify any further. So you just have the square root of 26 over 2 for both of them. Okay, now again, this is old school stuff. This is just supposed to be a refresher. This is not supposed to teach you how to do 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90. This is something that you've done in the past. That's just a quick refresher for you. So now, let's go do some of the fun stuff. So we're going to solve triangles. And when it says to solve a triangle, what that is telling you to do is you must find every missing side or angle. Okay, so it doesn't really have to give you letters, but basically what you need to know is that if you have capital letter A, that's an angle, and the side opposite of it, is going to be the lowercase letter of the same flavor. Okay, so that's why big C is over here the angle, the side opposite is little c. So if it makes you feel better to have letters in these problems, then just go right ahead and name them yourself. So we have A, we've got B, we've got C. It doesn't matter what the order is as long as you know what's going on. So you need to find three missing pieces. You need to find angle A, you need to find angle C, and you need to find little c. So this is where we're going to go back and we're going to use the trigonometry from geometry, so Katoa stuff, and our graphing calculators to answer these types of questions. So remember, the setup is always whatever trig function you're going to do, your angle is equal to your ratios. So this would be like your side over your side, depending on what it is using so Katoa. Remember, your calculator always needs to be in degrees and rounding we're gonna say that sides will get rounded to the nearest tenth and we're gonna say angles get rounded to the nearest minute what's a minute a minute is just a more accurate way to round angle measures. So you're going to need your graphing calculator to do that, and we will have a nice little discussion about minutes in the classroom, okay? So the purpose of this video is to give you the skills. We'll talk more about what a minute is besides the fact that it's 60 seconds and, you know, 1 60th of an hour. 
So, all right, so let's continue. Now that we're set up in calculator mode so you can see all the buttons I'm pushing, let's do this. So, when it says solve the triangle, you need to find all of the missing pieces. You need to find the angles and the missing sides. So, remember, this is math. So, to find little c, you can use trigonometry, or if you feel more comfortable, you can use the Pythagorean theorem since you have the other two. The answer is going to be the same no matter which way you do it. So you've got 3 squared plus little c squared is equal to 7 squared. And then once you get c, you're going to get c is equal to approximately 6.3. So now that you have 6.3 for little c, we need to go find the two missing angles. Now to do that, you know triangles always add up to 180 degrees, so you really only need to go find one of those angles. So to do so, we're going to use either sine or cosine um, of one of the two angles here. Um, or you can actually use tangent if you really, really like to. However, I like to try to avoid using the angle or the side that you just found previously. In case you made a mistake with that, you wouldn't get you know, all the other credit as well if you use that incorrect piece. So let's find angle A first. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at angle A, and we're going to see that we have an opposite side, and we have a hypotenuse. Um, again, I'm ignoring C for now because it wasn't given. So, that's a sine problem. We have opposite and hypotenuse, so we're going to find that the sine of angle A is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Now, to get sine to go away, we need to use inverse sine. So, we're going to take inverse sine of both sides. And that'll cancel the signs, and we'll have A is equal to inverse sine of 3 sevenths. So to do that, you just need your calculator. So what you do is you press the second button, and then you press sine. Remember, your calculator should be in degrees. And then inside, you just type 3 divided by 7, close your parentheses, click enter, and you're going to get that it's 25.3769, yada, yada, yada. But since we want things rounded to the nearest minute, we're going to press second and then the apps button, which takes you to your angle menu, and number four changes it to degrees, minutes, and seconds. Click enter, and we find that it is 25 degrees, 22 minutes, and 36 seconds. So 36 seconds is more than half of a minute, so this is going to round up to 25 degrees and 23 minutes. Okay, so now you have angle A. So you have two out of your three angles in the triangle. So in order to find the third angle, you do not need to use trigonometry again. You just do 180 degrees minus the two angles you already have. So your first angle is obviously the 90 degree angle. And now you're going to subtract the angle you just found of 25. The degree button is under that same angle menu. And then you have 23 minutes. So second, apps. And then number two is your minute symbol. And then you click enter. It'll give you a decimal. Second, apps number four. Change it back to degrees and minutes. And you will have that angle C is equal to 64 degrees and 37 minutes. So what we've done is we have found all the missing pieces of that triangle. And that, again, is called solving a triangle. And you're done. So the next example here, again, you get to call A, B, C, wherever you want, if there's nothing given. And this time, we actually must use trigonometry to find the missing side. So nice thing, you have two angles already. You just have to do 180 degrees, um, minus 90 and minus 35 to find out that this angle right here is going to be 55 degrees. So you already have big A. The only thing you have to do now is use trigonometry once or twice to find the missing sides. So to do so, you pick which one you want to find first. So we've got little a and little c to find. Um, so let's find little c. Little c is opposite of 35, and we have the hypotenuse of 10. So opposite and hypotenuse, again, is going to be sine. So we're going to say that the sine of 35 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which is little c, over the hypotenuse of 10. 
And now we need to solve for C. So to do that, you need to multiply both sides by 10. And that will cancel. And you'll have C is equal to 10 times the sine of 35 degrees. So all you have to do is type that in the calculator now. So you just take your calculator and you press 10 times the sine of 35 degrees. Click Enter. Since this is a side and we're supposed to be rounding to the nearest tenth, you know that C is equal to 5.7 units long. And now, like I said, you have to use trig a minimum of one time. So you could, if you would like, use the Pythagorean theorem, or you can just do trig again. I'm going to use trig again. So now we have to just go find little a. So to find little a, we are going to use the cosine of 35 degrees, and that is going to be equal to little a over 10. And now, same thing as last time, you need to get a by itself. So a is going to be equal to 10 times the cosine of 35 degrees. Use your calculator, 10 times the cosine of 35 degrees. Click Enter, and you get a is equal to 8.2. Now, if you really want to check and see if you did things correctly, you can uh, do a squared plus c squared in this situation not, and see if it matches up with 10, which it should. That means you did it right. Uh, the last example, I'm going to tell you that it is very similar to the problem that we just did. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video and try that example on your own, and we'll see if you get it correct. So if you did it correctly, you should have that big B is 25 degrees, little c is 9.5 degrees, or I'm sorry, units, and little a is 8.6 units. Um, again, uh, if you have your variable down in the denominator, remember to solve for c and to solve for a, you just need to switch places with this side. So this becomes c is equal to 4 divided by the sine of 25, and this one became 4 divided by the tangent of 25, and you would get all of these. So, so there you have it. This is Longo, and I'm out. See you, bye.